Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. And you can submit your questions using the hashtag AskGCNTech down in the comment section below, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible. So to kick things off this week, we have a question from Lieber Leuter, who asks, can I use SRAM Rival 22 levers and Shimano 105 rim brakes? Short answer, no, you can't. You can connect them up and it's will the, cal the brake lever will actuate the brake caliper. But the problem you've got is that the uh, lever pull ratios are slightly different between SRAM and Shimano, meaning that the performance of that brake will be pretty pants. It's the same if you do it the other way around. If you have a Shimano lever and a SRAM brake, it isn't gonna work great. I just get the, the same brand uh, for those two components. Uh, next question is from Stephen Macklin, who says, what happens to GCN presenter bikes when we're finished with them? Uh, do they go back to the manufacturers or do we put them up for sale? Maybe we could auction them for a good cause. Um, well, maybe we could, that's a good idea. But at present, what tends to happen is the bike sponsor that we have on GCN um, will ask for them back and we will just send them back to them. I know in the case of Orbea and Canyon that they do recondition bikes and then sell them on um, through their proved use platforms and on their outlet stores and then Orbea puts them out through their dealer network. Um, the same as they do with their pro sponsored uh, athletes and bikes and stuff as well. Uh, next question is from Kapara who says, if I use a one side power meter, should I look at three second power or 10 second power? Well, it's entirely up to you. Uh, there's no right answer there. Whatever you like and the beauty of it is you can change those stats often on your head unit if you've got a Wahoo or something like that to uh, be whatever you want. So have a play with it and see which stat you feel helps you the most. Personally, I go for three second power on any power meter I use, regardless of whether it's one-sided or dual-sided. I just find that three seconds is kind of that sweet spot of, it sort of irons it out and makes your, your power meter reading just a bit smoother, whereas 10 seconds, I feel it's just a bit too, bit too smooth. Uh, and one second, it's just too scatty. So yeah, I like three seconds personally. Next question is from uh, Olivier Hiros, who says, I would like to add a power meter on my Giant Defy Advanced 2. The crank arm is a Shimano FC RS510 and he's thinking about putting a single-sided stages power meter on it that would be Shimano FC R7000. Are they compatible? Thanks a lot in advance. Yeah, they are compatible because it's the same um, basic design on Shimano chain sets, right from that basic forearm uh, one there, the, the RS510, right up to Jura Ace. They all have this four bolt design now, which is great. So you just un, you know, undo the pinch bolts, undo the end cap. And it's this, if you look, you can see it's that same Holotech chain set design. It's just more exotic materials. So yes, you could put 105 on there. You could put Ultegra. You could even put Jura Ace on there if you really wanted to. Um, and they will, they will all be cross compatible, which is great. Next, we have a question from Jacob Long, who says, I've recently bought a new bike with SRAM Force ETAP. My left ankle keeps hitting the crank when I ride, and that has caused my ankle to bruise and um, start to get pain in his ankle as well. Any help with this? Well, it's probably not down to the crank, actually. Um, the, the most likely cause for this is your cleat setup. If your cleats have worn, they might have uh, developed, or your pedals for that matter, they might have developed quite a lot of play and lateral movement and extra float in the cleat, um, which is then causing your ankle to track in and clip the, the crank arm. So I'd look at your cleats, look at your pedals and check that they're not worn. If you have pedals with adjustable uh, float in them, such as, uh, speed play pedals, have it on the cleat. You could maybe dial in that float and try reducing the float or switching to Shimano cleats that have less float, that's another option. Um, and then that might stop your ankle just twitching out and hold it more in place. Uh, next question is from Marjorie Boissino, who says, I bought a smart trainer on eBay. It's come in great condition, but it's a bit grubby. Um, do I need to use e-bike cleaning products or can I get away with my usual bike cleaning products? Um, I, I, right, right, so cleaning a smart trainer is the general question here. And yes, it's an electrical item 
an electrical indoor appliance, they're not waterproofed, so be very careful when you start cleaning them. I'd certainly avoid, I wouldn't spray anything on it, um, and I would do what you're suggesting, which is maybe apply something to a cloth and wipe it off. Wipe it off externally. With regards, if it's a direct drive smart trainer and there's a cassette on it, use a cassette removal tool and a chain whip, get that cassette off, clean it separately away from the, you know, in a sink somewhere, dry it, then put it back on, um, and you should do it that way. But yes, just clean it as if you were cleaning a TV is probably the best way to, to go about it. Next question is from Juan Philippe Gallego, who said that he took his bike to a local bike shop and it seems some water has ingressed into his power meter. Now he's having problems with it and it's not properly doing the, the zero point calibration offset. He's wondering about the quality of his power meter with regards to water resistance and will it be normal again after it's completely dry? Well, it's, it's very difficult for me to speculate if it will be normal again. Um, with regards to the quality, again, hard for me to speculate because you know, I can't speak for all power meter brands. I do know that anecdotally, a lot of people do have problems uh, with the long-term durability of certain power meters, and in particular, pedals have been uh, a typical power meter that, that tends to last less or last not as long as some uh, crank-based power meters, and, you know, sort of bottom bracket chain set power meters tend to be a bit more durable. But the best thing you can do is take it up with the brand that you bought the power meter from and their sort of warranty and see what they can do. And it's probably, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be able to fix it. Last question this week is from Nietzsche Arbo Lajura. I think I got that right. Um, who asks, are pre-built bikes already lubed? If you're buying from a reputable brand, I would fully expect it to be uh, full, like pre-lubed. Although, you know, I have noticed in instances in the past when you know, I used to work in bike shops that sometimes they would come in and they, they wouldn't always be, or certain times you'd get a wheel and the free hub wasn't necessarily lubed. Um, but yes, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, why not check it? It's a good way to learn about your bike, but in most instances, you would expect that it should be pre-lubed. If it wasn't, it's the kind of thing that I would complain about to who I bought the bike from. So uh, I hope that, that answers your question. Uh, all that leaves me now is a, is a riddle for this week, which is um, what has to be broken before you can use it? I'm not going to tell you the answer. You can find the answer in the comments section down below. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. So I hope you've uh, you've enjoyed this. And I hope I was able to answer your question. You found it useful. If I haven't got around to your question yet, then uh, yeah, sorry. But uh, keep firing them down and we'll do our best to get to them eventually. It's always a pleasure answering your questions. And uh, either myself or Alex will sort you out in a subsequent tech clinic. All right, see ya.